Hello, hello. Welcome to Healthy Kids Corner with me, Dr. Brooks. Today I want to talk about a topic that, of course, we all know a lot about, which is autism. I've been getting some questions lately in the practice that are a little bit concerning, so I wanted to kind of do some do just a little video on some of the statistics and some of the treatment options so that those of you that are maybe just starting your journey or have started, uh, maybe you can get some clarity and some pathway clearance, if you will. So of course, we, according to the CDC in 2014, they put out a new statistic that one in every 54 boys and one in every 68 children is diagnosed with autism. So this is an increase over 30% from 2008 CDC report. And of course the rise began, as we know, after 1984. There's a lot of evidence to suggest that it was environmental, which is a trigger for the epidemic that we're seeing now. Then, you know, in my opinion, if we could figure out what that trigger was, we could probably get those numbers uh, to be a little more rare than one in every 54 boys. That is a very, very high amount. And that's the CDC, right? I would say in reality, now of course I'm. this is a little skewed because most of the children in our practice are on the autism spectrum or have some type of special need or developmental delay. However, I would say it's probably less than that um, because there's so many kids coming in with autism. So again, I might be a little skewed because of the population I see, but I do think that this is a uh, a very, very real and very, very scary statistic. So, of course, autism is a symptom, right, of an underlying issue. And that can go from the nervous system to the immune system, the gastro system, the GI system, of course, uh, neurology and toxicology systems. So, you have a big mess of things that go wrong. It's kind of a lot of little things break and then, boom, you've got a problem. So that's where really the root of it's coming from. The standing belief today is that autism cannot be helped and that parents need to get a diagnosis so that they can get some sort of therapy or counseling and they have to accept that diagnosis and move forward. I will tell you, I don't believe that that's true. I think there's a lot of help that can be given to children with autism and their families alike. I think therapy is a wonderful, wonderful intervention. Unfortunately, it's the first and only intervention that's given by a lot of the pediatricians and developmental pediatricians out there because it's, it's what they know to give in their toolbox and it's a great referral. However, they do miss a lot of the other side, the biomedical portion. So the biomedical belief is one that is caused by a biomedical problem. So Dr. Bernie Rimland was uh, the founder of Autism Research Institute, ARI, which you can still find online. In the 1960s, he started doing different protocols. And it became known as the biomedical approach, as many doctors have taken training, including myself, now they don't do that training through ARI anymore and I would say probably the every five years ago they stopped doing training. So I mean for parents and for clinicians. So there wasn't really anywhere to get training until probably two or three years ago. And now uh, MAPS is another organization. A lot of the instructors from DAN, the Defeat Autism Now organization, uh, now teach and started MAPS. One of my parents said, well, I thought, I thought that biomedical was better, finding a DAN doctor was better than finding a MAPS doctor. There are, the DAN organization doesn't exist anymore, so unless you've already taken that training, like myself and many others, there's not, you're, there's, that doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, so you can still do Google searches for it because a lot of people know about it, so a lot of us keep it on our websites. But there, it is not necessarily better than a MAPS doctor. The MAPS doctors are, in essence, they're doing the same thing, right? I will tell you, because I've done both, that I love the MAPS training for docs. Uh, they, they are really integrating the genetic issues, the methylation issues, the detoxification issues. So it's going beyond GI, and I feel like defeat autism now at the time and it was probably more about the research and what we were learning but it was very very gut oriented and I still am very very gut oriented in my practice however MAPS kind of takes it to a newer level a new dimension that we're realizing is, prob is a problem with that. things like the toxicological system I think the website so you can try to find a MAPS doctor in your area 
Anyway, let's get back to Bernard Rimland. So Dr. Bernie Rimland believed that the biochemical irregularities in the body that are caused by vitamin deficiencies, diet irregularities, really doing proper lab testing and interpretation of those labs to get a child better. And when you fix those irregularities in children, then a lot of times the symptoms, right, the symptoms of autism tend to go away. So his big thing was autism is treatable. And it's not, it's not something that I would say, I, I think the word cure is, is a little dangerous, uh, but there are definitely children that can make a humongous turnaround and be undiagnosed, if you will. And I've seen that myself. So it is possible. And we always say healing is possible and treatment is possible. But every child with autism looks different. And I was explaining to a new family that we call it the autism spectrum because it, it, the variants are so, 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 so wide. And so he asked me, well, where does my child fit on the spectrum? Because I, I hear a lot about that. And I don't know what that means. And I said, well, you know, it's neither here nor there. Um, so a lot of times the very, very low functioning children are at one side and the very, very high functioning are at the other and then everyone else is in between. So sometimes you'll get an assessment or a diagnosis and it'll say moderate autism or something like that. I told the family, ignore what that says. It, all you need to really focus on is the fact that it says autism, right? That's it. It doesn't matter how severe or how easy it is because I will tell you a parent of a severely autistic child that's nonverbal and not, not potty trained, for example, has just as hard of a time as the parent with a very, very high functioning, high IQ Asperger child. So it's not that one is better than the other. They all have their own, I would say, challenges and difficulties. So that's something to keep in mind. Don't focus so much on where do they sit on the spectrum, but that they have autism and that you seek out a provider to help you through that, right? So I'll leave a couple websites. Uh, the ARI.com website, they have some really great research. I also have some great research on my website for autism if you want to check that out at mychildwellness.com. I'm really passionate about helping children with autism. I don't have a child with autism. I don't have a child in my family with autism, which many people tend to think. But after helping families with autism over eight years, I have spent so much time in education really delving into I would say the idiosyncrasies of what it takes to really, really get a kid as well as you can. And everybody's journey, every kid's journey to wellness is different and, and every parent's goals are different. So I think that a care plan will typically evolve with your doctor and that will, you know, if they have enough experience, they'll be able to tell you what you're looking at. You know, for me, it's about pulling labs and seeing, you know, how, you know, how bad is it? Um, and how long does it typically take to clear some of these nutrient deficiencies, clean the diet up, get those things out, and get the brain functioning a little clearer? So I would say each person, you know, has, has a different journey for them. And I would say it's more of a marathon than a race, so don't be quite in a hurry. If you take the time and you do it right, you'll only have to do it once. So I often use referrals for speech, occupational, ABA, uh, and different specialists that I work with to help really pull together a treatment plan for our patients. I have some really great social skills people here uh, to help and a woman who helps uh, parents with their diet and things. So it's just one of those things that you have to find the right fit for your child and the right doctor and the right therapist. And so really take the time, seek out somebody that you can work with, that you trust, that you don't mind spending a lot of time with because this is again more of a journey than a race so you'll be in I would say you know look to really focusing on treatment for anywhere you know for a biomedical or now what we're really calling functional medicine approach for I'd say 12 to 18 months pretty rigorously and you will be able to make some tremendous changes with your child so I wish you the best on your journey I'll leave you some websites down below to check them some things out um, if you'd like more information on our parent or clinician training, you can visit dramberbrooks.com and sign up for those courses. I do those monthly and I love them. They are super fun and super great and really, really informative. We're also on Facebook at Whole Child Wellness, so you can see my posts there and things that are kind of trending. I make sure to comment on a couple times a week. And then of course you can visit our practice website at mychildwellness.com for research or more information about our practice if you would like to be a patient with us. So again, if, uh, please like the video and please um, share it 
if you've got some friends that are also interested or needing to know more about autism. So thank you for watching. Have a great week. Bye.